the Broadcast Channel API, the perfect solution for creating a multi-tab application. It is the best way to send messages between tabs. You will learn the entire API in just four lines of code and how to transform a solution into a multi-tab application. Okay, so what's the problem? More and more users are starting to have more than one screen, especially at work. And that is great, so much extra screen real estate, but the problem is that most applications are limited to one window. We're used to thinking about it like one tab, one solution, and that's good for most websites. But what about when you have a website that's starting to fill up? Like with this map application, where the pop-up is covering so much of the map and you want to see them both at the same time. Or what about a case management system? For example, for job applications, where you want to see the list of cases, case details, case history, case actions, case map, all in one tab. Then you are quickly running out of screen real estate. The available space on the screen to put UI elements. One solution is splitting the screen into pages, but that is slower because the user has to navigate back and forth and lose their context. What if they want to view it all at the same time? What is the solution to this? That's where the Broadcast Channel API comes into play. You start using it by creating a new broadcast channel with your preferred channel name. then. On each new message, you have a callback function where you can do something with the message coming from a different tab. And then you can also post a message to all listening tabs and close the channel. That's it. That's all the code you need to use this API. Time to see this in action. Here you can see two tabs sending messages between each other. And you can see that the message is only received in the other tab. And in this example, you can see how the message is sent to all other tabs. And just for fun, what happens if all the tabs respond immediately? Then you will get this chaos. Finally, time for some code. Here you can see we're starting with just pure HTML5 and adding in some styling in order to make it nicer. The next step is to add a few HTML elements, including the title, the button, and the message container where the content of the message received will be posted. Then we create a channel name that can be any string, which we then use to create a broadcast channel. We also create a reference to the message container element so we can access it later really easily. Then on each new message, we will take the message content and append it to the message container. And of course, we also need a send message function that just do channel.postmessage, whatever we want. And that's all the code we need. And this code, as seen earlier, will allow us to send messages directly between tabs. Okay, so what are the core concepts of the Broadcast Channel API? The first concept is multicasting. This is where one tab is sending to every single tab listening. So we have one sender and potentially a lot of listeners. This can get chaotic really easily, so we need a system to organize this. And that is where the concept of master and slaves come in. That is probably not a term that's aging really well, but it means that you have one tab that's in charge of the data and is the master tab, and then sends out messages to satellite tabs or slaves that display some data. One limitation when using the Broadcast Channel API is that you're limited to the same origin only. Given the page example.com, you can send to any tab which is on example.com or any subroute, but you cannot send on any subdomain, different port or a different website altogether. And it works on localhost as long as you have the same port. So in summary, you need the same schema, host and port. And if it's not been clear yet, you need the same computer and the same browser in order to send messages between tabs. And the Broadcast Channel API has low priority, which means it will be delayed when the tab is under heavy load. And this delay can be significant, up to a second. And you can't send and receive the same message. That is actually a good thing, especially in production, because you don't need to filter out your own message. But it's something you need to remember while debugging, because you can't send and receive the same message in one tab while testing. 
and you do not know which tabs sent your message and you don't know which tabs received your message. That is something you have to handle yourself, but I will show you that in the next video. And we need to talk about browser support because this will make or break this API. And it's actually really good. We have Chrome, Firefox, Opera, and the new Edge. That is the new logo when they switch to Chromium underneath, by the way. But to no surprise, we do not have Internet Explorer support, but we don't have Safari either. I've been looking into their bug tracker and it seems this is just something they haven't prioritized yet. So we might see support in the near future. But the really good news is this feature can be polyfilled. So what are the alternatives? The first one is local storage, which has the best browser support, but it's slower, more error prone, and you have data leakage, but it's a good alternative. And next we have the channel messaging API which is not really an alternative because it's only working in iframes in the same window. And we also have shared workers, which works, but it's more messy and has less browser support. But before you jump on the alternatives, I want to say that in my personal opinion that the broadcast channel API is significantly better and easier to work with. But you might be thinking, can't I achieve this just with a backend? And you're right, it can be achieved with a backend, but it's significantly harder and it will lead to higher complexity because you have to keep track in the backend of which tabs are open in the frontend. And using the broadcast channel API is easier because it's a 100% frontend solution in just four lines of code. But you should not force your users to use this API because not everyone has several screens and not everyone wants a multi-tab solution. I have, in my personal experience, seen that most users want this, but not everyone. You should consider wrapping the broadcast channel API in something like RxJS, which makes it a lot easier to handle a lot of tabs talking to each other in real time. And I will provide that for you in the next video. Join me next time in part 2 where I will talk about the advanced broadcast channel API with RxJS and Angular. And that was the basics of the broadcast channel API. Thank you for watching and I hope you will love this simple API just as much as I do.